Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Swedish Startup Session. I'm here with Mikael Pavlo, founder of, co-founder, I would say, of Mr. Green, uh, investor in several uh, companies and both chairman and board member of another bunch of companies, including funded by me. And we're going to talk about uh, gambling, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and the Swedish startup scene. So stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G. Please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bet you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all, you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G. Please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bet you be thanking God. This this is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Welcome back to the Swedish Startup Sessions. I'm here with Mikael Pavlo, who is uh, one of the most uh, well-known people, I would say, in the Swedish startup scene. Um, you started out as a lawyer. That's where I, I uh, connected with you first. I heard your name. And since then, you've gone on to found a lot of uh, different companies. Um, even though if you don't want to admit it, you're some, somehow a bit of a super angel. You're, you're um, uh, investing in a lot of companies, you're on the board of a lot of companies. But um, tell me a little about what I don't know about you. What you don't know about me? Um, right. Uh, I, I don't think I'm considering myself as, as a super angel, actually. Um, I happen to um, uh, invest small amounts of money uh, in... Uh, very early stages in some, some companies, but I really go for the entrepreneurs rather than uh, sort of the best business cases mm -hmm. and such. Um, yeah, furthermore, what you don't know about me, I'm, um, I'm fairly good at running, so I'm, oh? I'm thinking that I'm, I'm uh, turning 40 this year, yeah. so uh, I think as, as a part of my major crisis now <laughs> happening, uh, it's, on, it's in October, so you have only seen, seen the beginning of it. Okay, yet. okay. Uh, yeah. So as part of, of my crisis, um, I will uh, pick, up, uh, pick up running again. So, nice. Yes. And you had just returned from m several years at Malta, where you founded the Mr. Green online casino. Correct, yes. yes. Uh, and I remember, um, what could it be, like four or five years ago or something, a Mr. Green... Uh, sort of surfaced in the blogosphere with a lot of rather pointed and funny comments and th this was before all, all the comment spam started out and I was thinking who is this guy and everybody else on the scene on the so social media scene was who is this guy and then you launched Mr. Green and it was like this big aha moment okay it's it's uh, Mickey behind it. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that strategy? Because it was a really brilliant way to, to sort of... I'm, I'm very happy that you <laughs> call it brilliant because that's not exactly how it was described mm -hmm. at the time by, by some uh, very influential and smart people. But, but um, um, basically, at, at the time for this, um, I, um, uh, I was heading up um, a PR firm uh, together with uh, Mats Hedberg, a brilliant PR genius. And we sold that firm to a bigger company, a more well-known company called Springtime. Mm -hmm. So um, I was uh, still at Springtime. I had uh, terminated my contract, etc., but I, I was still sort of finishing off there uh, when we decided to do Mr. Green. And uh, we needed, uh, we didn't have a lot of cash, um, but we needed to start sort of building the hype around the character. And, um, uh, in order to do that, uh, it, it was sort of a different time at that time because the blogosphere was very, very dominant. We didn't have Twitter. Maybe we had Twitter, mm. but it was not big at the time. Um, and Facebook hardly didn't exist on Swedish radar, mm, more yeah, or less. I mean, well, not, not that 2007, 2008, yeah, it, it existed, but yeah. it was not that big, uh, no. that dominant. Uh, but, but the blogosphere was, was very dominant in certain circles. Mm. Um, and uh, I wanted to to get some uh, sort of ambassadors uh, for for the casino because 
a casino is obviously not the product that you would um, like to um, uh, to hide uh, as much as other startups. Um, uh, when I compare it to, I, I'm also an investor now in, in funded by me, yeah. and um, uh, when I compare sort of the uh, the traction that funded by me gets uh, all uh, by itself more yeah. or less yeah. um, in in uh, the startup community, where we should call it, compared to Mr. Green, uh, it's it's very very different yeah. um, because we wanted to do Mr. Green as a fair and um, uh, very honest uh, online gambling experience. Uh, but still, in the end, it is a casino, and yeah. people are a bit wary of, of casinos. So I wanted to, to get on the radar of those ambassadors, to get back to the question, I'm drifting away here, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, to get on the radar of those ambassadors so they actually looked at the product. Um, and then I thought, it, if, if I did it as sort of a Mr. Green character, um, uh, they, uh, making some sort of Mr. Green tongue in cheek remarks uh, in, the, in the blog uh, uh, comment section, we would pop up on, on the radars, uh, respective radars, sooner or later. And it happened quite quickly. Um, it, um, uh, we, we also launched our own blog called Who is Mr. Green? Um, and we didn't say anything about the product. Uh, we have started to build the character as sort of a gentleman and making uh, quirky remarks and, and uh, trying to be nice to people, more or less. Um, and, and some people uh, became quite uh, upset about this because uh, I, I think, may, maybe it's not 100% correct, but I think it was one of the first uh, uh, first times when, when someone did something like this in, in Sweden. Um, it's, it's been a lot of sort of uh, fake blogs, etc. Yeah. after this, but I think it was one of the first times. Um, so it, it became sort of a, a discussion. And uh, then it became also a problem because um, once I, I made a co comment with um, um, logged in at uh, the VPN of uh, Spring Times, and um, uh, so, so I, I was at home, but, but I, I, I made the comment uh, with the VPN oh, uh, sort okay. of uh, running, so uh, uh, it, it was tracked to, to Spring Times IP. And um, then uh, people started looking through uh, because it, uh, I started to make sort of gambling remarks mm -hmm. after a while. And then people started looking through the, um, uh, uh, the roster of employees. Uh, they found me and uh, then they uh, had also found uh, that MrGreen.com was registered uh, by my co-founder Fredrik Sidfolk, uh, who is an ex Betson founder from another gambling company. So uh, they put one and one together, and uh, the result was not two, but more like ten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, uh, the Swedish publication Dagens Media started calling uh, uh, the front desk at springtime, asking for Mr. Green, <laughs> uh, who is Mr. Green, and so forth. And um, that was good, but we were not ready with the product, uh -huh, so, so okay. it was a bit premature. Yeah. So we ran into some, uh, some road bumps regarding this as well. And then when we finally launched, um, uh, there, there was actually some disappointment uh, within this sort of blogosphere, th that part of the blogosphere that we had uh, uh, targeted, uh, because it was like, oh, is it just an, uh, an online casino? We thought that we had done something uh, quite differently from, mm. from the rest, but uh, um, we encountered some, uh, or I encountered some, some disappointment, unfortunately. So sorry for that. <laughs> um, uh, but at least we got on the radar, and that was sort of the, the first mm -hmm. object. Uh, so and, so. and when you founded Mr. Green, um, I mean, online casinos is a quite generic experience to a large degree, sort of same product, I mean, you can fiddle with the details. Was this a sort of differentiation with a, um, persona, the, the, the basic idea? in how to differentiate, or, or did you have right. either so, other so, uh, issues? Um, there were a lot of issues. <laughs> uh, no, but, um, uh, so the basic, uh, we are three childhood friends, uh, myself, Fredrik Sidfolk and Herrick Bergqvist, um, and um, uh, the idea to do an online niche casino, that's not my idea mm -hmm. in the beginning. We wanted to do something together, and um, then Fredrik and Herrick came up with the idea that um, Perhaps there is an opportunity to do uh, a niche uh, online casino as such. Uh, at the time, uh, most of the 
gambling companies were um, portals, mm. uh, and they were all based on uh, sports book, that's betting, yeah. uh, or poker. Mm. And then they had a casino, and um, since Fredrik and Henrik had a background from from Betson, they knew that it was highly profitable uh, to to have a casino, and at the same time, it was. Um, uh, at, at no other company, it was treated with sort of the respect and the uh, um, focus uh, that the product actually needs uh, mm -hmm. to, to be done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was sort of the first idea. Um, then we had a, had a discussion whether it was okay to actually do uh, an online casino as such, mm -hmm. uh, more perhaps from, from a moral perspective, yeah. because uh, I was a bit wary that um, there is a risk, uh, of course people will win, um, but some people will also not win, um, and uh, how uh, how do we sort of deal with that uh, that issue? Mm -hmm. um, and um, then we came up with the uh, the concept of um, green gaming, uh, which is sort of a cornerstone of the entire Mr. Green philosophy. And green gaming is is um, uh, a concept where you um, uh, set your you define sort of the amount of risk that you're willing to take uh, per week or per month, uh, and then you set your, your budget for this. So if you compare it to going out mm. uh, at a nightclub, uh, when you meet the, the bouncer, uh, he asks you, so how much are you uh, going to drink tonight? Mm. And you say a beer, or in your case perhaps a glass of champagne, but, yes. but uh, in my case I say uh, one beer. And uh, then, as it for some reason always happens, you try to order the second one. Um, the barman will say, sorry, you can return next week. Mm. So that's basically the same yeah. concept yeah. as, as green gaming. And all, all companies, they had some sort of responsible gaming, mm. uh, because you're, you're, uh, you, you have to have that to, mm. to have the sort of gaming licenses. Um, but uh, the, different, the different thing was that we um, enhanced this and put it in the registration flow. So when people are sort of still sober, uh, yeah. when, when they yeah. haven't started yeah. playing, you're forced to, to make that decision of, mm. of how much you're, you're willing to risk. Mm. Um, so that was one thing. Uh, the other thing that was that we actually wanted to do sort of a real brand. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be called BetXXX. Mm. Um, maybe that's not the best uh, abbrevi <laughs> abbreviation for some reason, uh, but, but not sort of bet uh, generic, or yeah, generic yeah. bet, so to speak. Um, but rather have, have uh, a more proper uh, branding. Brand, uh, mm. branding. Um, and um, uh, I, I didn't c come up with the, the name Mr. Green either. Um, that was Frederick. Um, so I'm just a passenger, <laughs> as, uh, as, you, as you start to start to realize. Um, and that was very funny. That's a, actually a funny story because um, Frederick was going around. Uh, we were looking for a name. Uh, the working name for this project was Lucky Look, but we quite quickly realized that. Uh, that you, I don't know if you know about yeah, the yeah, cowboy, yeah. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, comic strip. Um, but we quite quickly realized that it, it won't be possible to, to get a license mm -hmm. or it will be too costly to get that license. Uh, and also we're not sure if we want to do like a saloon mm -hmm. online. Um, uh, and Frederick was going around and then he uh, came up with the idea of Mr. Green because Maurice Green or Mo Green, he uh, started the first casino in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And we thought that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And dollars um, are green. Yeah, dollars are green, and the zero on the roulette wheel is green, yeah. etc. So, uh, and also the tablecloth mm -hmm. uh, for most table games, uh, that's also uh, green. Mm -hmm. So it's, oh, that sounds good. And it has, uh, you could say that green is also a beginner, um, yeah. but, but um, or a newbie. Uh, but we thought that, yeah, this, this could be quite, quite nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, Anyway, um, uh, we uh, purchased the domain name. It was costly, really costly, uh, because of course MrGreen.com was not mm. available. Uh, we did. We, we filed for a community trademark within the EU, mm. um, and uh, we collaborated with uh, an advertising firm in, in uh, Stockholm to build sort of the the brand and the trademark and so forth. And uh, then we were and we built the entire site around this concept. And then we were about to launch. I did some background checking because um, I wanted to build sort of story a bit more mm -hmm. uh, in them um, and build the character as well. And um, uh, then I could only find one reference to this Mo Green, the founder of the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the first casino in, in um, Vegas. Uh, and that was from the movie Godfather, um, 
first part. Um, uh, and uh, Mo Green, he was running the Corleone family's casino in Las Vegas, um, and he ended up skimming it. He was stealing money from, from this casino, and uh, in the end, his, uh, when, when Michael, the son, is cleaning up, he end, ends up being shot in the eye uh, when he's having a massage. Uh, and that's Mr. Green. Um, so I asked Frederick, I was like, this is the only uh, reference I can find to this character. Frederick's like, oops, maybe <laughs> I was Googling a bit too quickly. <laughs> so then we had to stick to it, but yeah. it was even better because yeah. then we, had, we could build an entire uh, a fictional, fictional yeah. story around it. So um, uh, that we did. So that's behind the name. Uh, uh, I don't rem remember the question, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, so. Anyway, uh, but, but as an investor today, um, would you say, if you look back at Mr. Green and the competition, um, uh, and if, if you would advise startups today, is, is uh, the product itself or the technology or the branding, which is the most important part, would you say? Um, uh, none of the above. Okay. Uh, I think the most important part is actually the, uh, the entrepreneur or mm. entrepreneurs, the guys mm. buying it. Um, we uh, had a very good team. Uh, we're also uh, very good as uh, uh, as a founding team ourselves, mm -hmm. because we have different competences mm -hmm. as such, uh, and different personalities as well, which I think is quite important. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, other than that, uh, I think that uh, marketing, branding, product development, look and feel, look and feel was something we worked a lot on mm -hmm. uh, in this as well. Um, I think they're all all very very important. And in, um, as far as it goes for myself, I, I still have a bit uh, of a hard time regarding myself as an investor, but, but uh, I, I, in those few um, occasions where I actually invest in, in a company, um, I, I would also like to see uh, a, a quite clear revenue stream, uh, because I was also around in 2000, mm. so I know everything about sort of value creation, uh, yeah. and uh, I'm uh, not doing that again. So, mm. so, uh, um, I, I really like when you have a strong driving entrepreneur and, and some, um, some revenue somewhere, so to speak, mm. uh, that you can actually identify. Do you think we are, are heading into that kind of startup bubble again? Not as big, uh, because we had a, there was a lot of other factors, but, but with uh, valuations are driving too high, especially in the US, not so much in, the, in Sweden perhaps. Well, um, or is the market more disruptive right now with, with that technology sh shift? Well, a lot of those ideas that were launched in 2000 mm -hmm. actually works now because yeah. the technology and the, the infrastructure and also the user base mm -hmm. uh, has improved and increased a lot. So, so um, that's a big difference. Uh, but on the other hand, I strongly believe that uh, a few companies, um, um, I don't know if I have any specific examples, but a few companies are definitely um, a bit inflated in terms of valuation mm -hmm. uh, because it's tough to see exactly where will the revenues come from, uh, how, how will uh, people or companies pay for the services, uh, etc. So, so I think it's um, more of uh, my approach is I, I wouldn't compare myself to Warren Buffett in any sense mm -hmm. whatsoever, uh, but, but um, he has, it, it makes some sense when he's actually looking for, for the revenues. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I think that if you completely disregard that, uh, you might be entering into sort of the bubble territory. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in Sweden, uh, I don't see that so strongly because it's so tough for the companies to actually find any money yeah. at all. Um, I consider myself uh, the guy that you come to um, when you have failed like 60 to 100 times <laughs> with other <laughs> angels and, <laughs> and so forth, then they call me. Um, and um, uh, that happens actually a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a bit uh, uh, disturbing because yeah. I, I think there is actually a gap there between sort of ideas, drive, entrepreneurs, and, and the funding. Mm -hmm. um, so so um, that's a problem, but on the other hand, it also sort of restricts uh, uh, the risk for, for a bubble locally. Yeah, here. yeah. Do you think that, that uh, we will have a problem for, for Sweden as a nation when it comes to innovation, job creation and so on, with the current sort of general investment crunch that, that young companies have a very hard time finding this 
early stage investments. Right. I'm uh, uh, as such. I'm not a super big fan mm. of uh, sort of the nationalism and, and mm. uh, oh, what should we do about mm. Sweden, etc., uh, and the national state as such. But but um, uh, trying to sort of uh, relate to the question, I think that um, uh, the answer is probably yes and no, mm. um, because. These companies, they will not be uh, sort of the big employers in terms of headcount. Um, if you look at Spotify, which is an amazing company, and Danny Rek is doing a tremendous job, um, they are still about seven, eight hundred people, and yeah. um, that's a lot for for such a company. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's say they grow uh, uh, ten times their size today, um, they will still not be sort of a huge employer compared. Well, then they will be uh, <laughs> quite a big employer, but. Um, uh, but if they, if they grow ten times in in revenue and, and market share, uh, or, or in markets, countries, etc., um, they probably don't need um, that many uh, ten times mm -hmm. uh, more people. They might need twice as much people or something like that. Um, the, the way uh, Daniel is running, it. and um, uh, and that's sort of the, the most successful company. And if you look at another super successful company, we're young. Um, uh, they're I think they're still less than 30, yeah. um, and they have uh, about uh, 130 million euros mm. uh, profit <laughs> per year uh, last year. Mm. Uh, not turnover, but profit. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, they, uh, for now, they don't really. Uh, it doesn't really need more more people mm. uh, to succeed. So this is not the area where where uh, the, the big job creation will take place. I think. But on the other hand, uh, we could have a lot of those companies. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, uh, yeah, and there will be sort of a secondary uh, market for for the cash <laughs> generated by, mm -hmm. by those those uh, companies as well, uh, which will create jobs mm -hmm. um, in in other sectors, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, so they're definitely important, uh, and the um, um, the lack of of um, um, I actually I would call it the lack of venture capital. Yeah. Uh, I think is a problem um, on one hand. On the other hand, uh, if, if you should be a bit um, uh, uh, Darwinist about it, uh, I think that the good entrepreneurs will still find mm. uh, the capital sooner or later. Mm. Uh, but it could be sort of a detergent for, for people actually leaving their uh, safe. Yeah. I don't yeah. think any, any job is safe, but they're safe jobs. Um, and, and to actually take the leap and, and um, enter into uh, the unknown territory of uh, I mean, we have seen a lot of investment just the last year from London and Berlin and the, and the US into Swedish companies. But you are also a bo board member and investor in Funded by Me, which recently did a pivot from the more crowd funding to equity funding. And where do you see Funded by Me being in this? investment ecosystem. Right. Um, I think Funded by Me uh, is um, a very important instrument uh, to, to sort of fill this gap. Mm -hmm. uh, I sometimes refer to it uh, as sort of investment bank light <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's for, for those who won't uh, turn up at uh, Carnegie or, or uh, um, the banks, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they still Sort of need they, they perhaps they need uh, 100,000 euros or something yeah. like that, um, and uh, they might not be in a position to ask friends, uh, uh, f friends and family uh, about those funds. Mm -hmm. um, so so that there uh, that's a place where funded uh, can sort of fill fill a position, an important position, uh, in my opinion. And um, uh, the other thing is of course uh, to for companies to find ambassadors, yeah. so so some companies um, they need uh, that kind of ambassadors because they have a product that should be sort of spread um, throughout the country or countries, um, and that's very sort of efficiently done if people are actually also owners of the yeah. company. The Do you see that uh, more? What do you say? Traditional companies, uh, I mean, young companies, but say healthcare or physical stores or you know, 
the entire internet world is a buzz with 3, 3D printing and cottage industry right now. You see that kind of company is being funded by, funded by me in the future. Right, uh, they're not really found, uh, funded by funded by me, but through the sort yeah. of members yeah. uh, members. But but um, uh, yes, definitely. But I think the big thing is actually outside of the sort of internet bubble. Yeah, uh, no, that's what uh, I mean. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. so um, uh, companies like uh, Flipping Burgers mm -hmm. um, uh, was uh, founded by founded by me mm -hmm. restaurant with really cool hamburgers in Stockholm. Um, uh, a vodka brand has been been um, uh, doing. Uh, first uh, equity round yeah. through uh, so um, and I that think was the around big thing one million crowns I think yeah one million yeah. crowns uh, and that was just finished mm -hmm. uh, I don't know a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago um, and um, those kind of companies uh, they, they don't have uh, access to sort of the internet uh, Common, ecosystem yeah. or, or, or uh, uh, angel system mm -hmm. or, or anything like that um, of course having said that um, uh, even internet companies have very um, poor access to, to, to uh, such uh, investors because they aren't really around that mm -hmm. much. Uh, but yes. Do you think that, that the, the expectations from the investors uh, who invest in, in generally in, in funded by me uh, companies are less, uh, it's more about emotion that I want to go and buy things at this company or I want to be a customer, rather than, for instance, that uh, an angel or a VC, they, they look more at, at the bottom line and, you know, how, how many times can I, I um, increase my profit when I do an exit. Do you think it's a difference in, in perspective there from the investment point of view? Uh, good question. I'm, I'm actually not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, there are probably different kind of mm -hmm. kinds of investors uh, in the uh, in founded as in as in the rest of the world, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but definitely something we should should look, in, look into mm -hmm. a bit. Hopefully, uh, the companies will be profitable and, and uh, give a good return on investment. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, some of these uh, companies that are, are seeking funds and, and have um, uh, seek funds uh, in, in the past, um, they are definitely a lot about sort of the passion investment. Uh, so mm. like, like flipping for mm. example, that people mm. really wanted them to, mm. to open up mm. and, and start this concept. So, yes. Um, to, to return a bit to, to uh, Mr. Green, um, you told me previously, uh, before the interview, that you have more or less left uh, the operational side of the company now sure, and taken yes. a more passive role. Uh, so what, what stage are, are the company at right now? Right. Um, so bas basically, I think we have entered a new phase, um, and um, it's about 100 employees. Uh, it's quite uh, steady state, still still growing, of mm -hmm. course, but, but um, uh, it's quite stable mm -hmm. sta or stabilized. Uh, it's not this sort of crazy startup mm -hmm. thing where um, every 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 curtain is on fire, yeah, more or less, yeah. and the house is burning down. Uh, that's not the uh, the situation. It's it's quite. Um, uh, quite a growing concern, so to speak, and um, uh, we're still opening new countries, etc. Um, How many countries the, are you right now? It's uh, a good question. Uh, I would say that we're operative uh, for real in, in seven countries, mm -hmm. and uh, we're sort of uh, uh, sniffing around <laughs> in three more. <laughs> and, <laughs> and how have they? I mean, we in Sweden are a bit pur puritanical when it comes to, to gambling and, and betting and the whole uh, industry. How have, have your um, branding around the green uh, casino and the green gambling uh, been, been received in other countries? Uh, very nicely. In yeah. the industry, uh, we have been uh, initially laughed upon and um, everyone thought, that why, why are you doing this? Yeah. It's stupid, uh, you shouldn't do it like this and you will just, just lose money. But, but the sort of idea behind it is that we don't want to take a lot of money from a few people, mm. um, but we want uh, a lot of customers yeah. instead, and uh, um, they pay for, for much less. Yeah. That's sort of the idea behind it, so a so, uh, mass market product mm. rather than anything else. And um, uh, as far as I know, it's been uh, perceived in other, other countries uh, very, very, very nicely. Mm. 
Um, of course, we try to be, be quite open and transparent with uh, how the casino works and, and what kind of uh, uh, returns you can expect, etc. Um, we, we really don't want to um, fool the people. Uh, we, we want them to, to enjoy themselves and be entertained. That's mm -hmm. sort of the, the uh, um, uh, raison uh, behind it, yeah. so to speak. Um, uh, and and um, uh, I mean, gambling and gaming as such, as a global phenomenon, is, this is one of the, I think it's one of the ten biggest industries uh, mm -hmm. in the world, so to mm -hmm. speak, uh, as such, if you count land based, etc. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so people like to, to take that little risk uh, and have some extra fun, uh, spice up mm. uh, sort of the everyday. Uh, that's not, nothing that we sort of invented, yeah. uh, that, that's been around for thousands of years. Um, uh, but to do that in a more controlled environment, uh, people really like that. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, we, we still turn a profit, so yeah. it's, it's okay for us as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's been, it's been something that has uh, significantly distinguish us from the rest, mm -hmm. I would say, as well. So, so it, uh, it's good for business, but it's also good for the night's sleep. Yeah. And, and uh, do you see that, I mean, we have a rather uh, draconian uh, regulations in Sweden around betting and gambling. Uh, do you see them changing anytime soon? Because, I mean, we have had, had a host of successful gambling and betting companies from Sweden, but ev all of them are based in Malta, more or less, yes. and the Cyprus. Yes, uh, and um, that's quite interesting. For, for some reason, Sweden seems to be producing very good gaming companies and gambling companies. Mm. We're really good at sort of that uh, sector. Uh, that sector. Um, and um, uh, the gaming companies are sort of kind of embraced, starting to be embraced, mm. um, but that's not entirely true either, because, for example, Stardoll has suffered a lot of... Yeah. Uh, a lot of issues uh, locally here, um, but it's still considered one of the sort of most amazing uh, companies in, in, its, uh, in its area, mm. uh, except for here, yeah. uh, where yeah. it's regarded yeah. sort of with a thumbs down for some very yeah. strange reason. Marketing uh, to children is bad. Uh, exactly, exactly. And um, uh, that's sort of a big discussion, but, but uh, um, uh, I think that also when it comes to gambling companies, We've had sort of the same uh, situation. Um, you can uh, you, you can like or dislike gambling. I'm, I'm fine with that, but but uh, uh, it's a bit weird to sort of I like the monopoly company, but I don't like the private company. Mm. Uh, that that's uh, a distinction that's mm. that's a bit weird. Mm. And, and also from a EU perspective, it's not legal uh, to to make that distinction. So, no. so the Swedish law is is break, uh, breaking and in breach of. of EU regulation. Yeah. So yes, it needs to be changed somehow. Mm. Um, uh, it's possible uh, that some kind of regulation will uh, um, take place, let's say, within three years from now. Mm. Uh, that's uh, what we think at least. Um, and uh, uh, we believe uh, that that regulation will uh, yeah, allow <laughs> private companies yeah. to, to uh, quite freely mm -hmm. uh, market uh, their respective services in, in Sweden um, because that's uh, what they are um, uh, prohibiting today but, but it's sort of not the legal um, prohibition so, so that's, that, that must be the road yeah. to travel. Uh, another option is of course that they close down Svenska Spel and uh, they prohibit marketing uh, all in all, that's yeah. also possible. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that um, the Swedish Minister of Finance, Anders Borg, would be very happy <laughs> about losing that income. But uh, that's probably a, not. Uh, yes, that's a, that's a different yeah. matter. So yeah. So. And, and where do you see the trend is going in the industry right now? Uh, because I mean, we've seen on on the gaming side, there's been a huge shift in the market from from the the desktop games like like uh, everything from from Counter Strike to to uh, World of Warcraft to the, the sort of small, easy mobile games like Angry Birds and so on, uh, and, and casual gaming. Do you see the same kind of shift on, on the uh, casino and betting market? Um, we are very much in the casual mm. uh, gaming space, uh, and I think that there, are, there, there is some kind of um, um, melting point going on, or melting pot, or whatever you call it, um, between... Um, Casino-type games, mm -hmm. um, 
social gaming like Facebook based yeah. gaming uh, mobile and uh, with mobile I call I, I will refer to um, uh, your iPad as, yeah. as mobile um, a bit sloppy but, mm. but still uh, and smartphones mm. um, those are all sort of merging, uh, merging now mm. um, and um, uh, when, I, when I'm saying this I, I get a bit a bit wary because uh, this was also what we thought back in uh, 1996. <laughs> I just started to realize when, when I was working at Born Your Line, and it was like everything is converging, uh, sort of the, the major, major trend. And, and now that is happening yeah. uh, in those sectors, like 16 years later. Mm. So perhaps this will take, the shift might take a bit longer than I expect, mm. but, but um, um, uh, super clear trends that, that's, um, th that are very evident, mm. I think, to ever, everyone is that um, the traffic is moving into those devices, mm -hmm. the new devices. Um, web is sort of going down mm -hmm. uh, from traditional desktop and laptops. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, for example, companies like Synga is moving into what we call, uh, we refer to as real money gambling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, they are really tanked at the stock market. Uh, yes, that's true, but that's sort of a different uh, different issue, mm -hmm. I think. But, but um, uh, they still have uh, 300, 300 million monthly uh, average users, mm -hmm. so, so they're not that small. <laughs> Even though the stock, uh, yeah. stock price is down, uh, they're still a huge company. Um, so, so they will move into sort of our area. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are, of course, looking into what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, everyone is moving into, into uh, mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting time. Mm -hmm. I think in the end, um, everyone has to start to, to sort of appreciate that we're competing about time uh, and attention mm -hmm. uh, rather than sort of uh, our comp main competitors might actually be Synga rather than for example the other uh, gambling companies. Yeah or might it even be I'm thinking with all the new uh, for instance TV and uh, video on demand alternatives might that be also a comp competitor of the time and, and the interest? Um, well that's not exactly how you use them, uh, because people um, tend to not sit, sit um, very attentively and actually looking at these uh, TV shows, mm. etc. They, they tend to, uh, um, that's it's a bit it's more, more but they tend to do but something back else at the same, at the same time, um, yeah. like for example, uh, playing games. Yeah, um, active and passive. Yeah, yeah yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, when you look at, at uh, the Swedish startup scene, do you see any clear any, any up-and-coming companies in, in the, the gaming casino betting era? In the gaming casino, um, yeah, I think that um, uh, Quickspin, uh, mm -hmm. which is a new um, uh, supplier of games, um, that they will uh, do quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, have a great uh, founders team uh, with people from Netten, from Net Entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, so that company is not so well known in, in Sweden, uh, but it's starting to make a huge mark in in uh, the gaming industry. Uh, another company that's doing very very well uh, is Evolution Gaming, also uh, founded by by Swedes, um, based in Malta, mm -hmm. uh, or Malta and uh, Riga, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, I think there are about a thousand employees now, oh. so it's huge. Yeah. Um, and they're supplying uh, live casino, um, so live uh, stream, mm. sort of live streams mm. uh, of, of uh, uh, casino builders, etc. So those two companies are, are uh, emerging a lot uh, mm. in, in sort of my space. Mm. So they're, they're quite uh, um, they're rising stocks, yeah. so to speak. As as an investor, do you see any other strong trends? Uh, as an investor, <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> or uh, non non investor. <laughs> as a non investor, uh, non investor, strong trends. Um, yeah, I think that um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the sort of startups uh, now are very well thought out and, and uh, well presented. Uh, I think it's quite impressive uh, how uh, how far we have uh, have come now mm -hmm. in, in in Sweden. Now. Stockholm, Gothenburg, mm -hmm. Malmö, etc. Uh, even Lugio. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's um, uh, spreading all over the country, and um, people are very. The entrepreneurs are very versed in, in what they are doing. So mm -hmm. I'm super impressed. Mm -hmm. uh, when I uh, started out uh, trying to set up companies, uh, I was no, nowhere near what uh, the current startup uh, founders are. Mm -hmm. are. 
um, um, a friend of mine, he described it once as uh, what we were doing back in 99, 2000. Um, that was um, uh, actually a mocking uh, real uh, uh, um, entrepreneurship. Yeah, uh, it was yeah. not a joke, uh, it was worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when when I went went to was at uh, next Berlin this this um, spring or last spring, um, there was a very strong message from um, uh, the investor panels that today you can't you can't really come just with a business plan or a presentation or anything to get money. You need actual product and you need users and preferably revenue. So so the stakes have been. Um, Put forward for for an investment to a much larger degree. Do you see that as well? Uh, or de do well, it depend I, on on the type of of industry? I'm I'm not sure. It's sort of entirely my field, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't see it as clearly as, as you do. But mm -hmm. but um, um, I, I uh, would believe it's true from some stories I hear. Mm -hmm. But I can't say it's mm -hmm. like a hundred percent like that in Stockholm. But um, uh, it's definitely very tough on those companies that needs to uh, be, be uh, um, bootstrapped. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to do some sort of half uh, half bake, baked uh, consultancy business in in the sort of the bottom to to mm -hmm. um, uh, supply yourself and be able to sort of pay for your food yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. and uh, uh, and uh, a place to stay. Uh, and then in the evenings and the weekends, you're supposed to build your new mm. new uh, billion-dollar company. Mm. Um, I think that's that's very very tough, mm. uh, and that's sort of the space where it's actually lacking some some uh, funding opportunities. Yeah. Uh, so that might be the same. But, but yeah, and, also and also, I feel that uh, that a lot of especially Swedish investors I talk to, they are really not interested in funding somebody else's salary. Even if it's just paying for for like uh, rent and food, we're not talking like any high salaries, but just to get by. Um, so there you have the crunch again. Right. Basically, you have to hire somebody to do your work. That then it's okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and then then it gets a bit trite. But uh, if you should ra wrap up this interview, which has been really interesting, um, you told me you're you're working on a little secret. Project. Yes. Um, can you say anything about it? What are we going to see? Um, I cannot say anything about it right <laughs> now uh, because it's really in stealth mode yeah. and it's quite fresh. But um, hopefully, if, if it all goes well, uh, you'll see it this fall. Uh, ah. So, so it's uh, some time away, uh, but not a lot of time away. So uh, we'll see. Sounds time really matters. interesting. And what do you see for for um, from a funded by me perspective? Uh, when it comes to, to uh, new deals and so on? I mean, you got um, in a huge fund. Yes. Um, I think that it will uh, continue to grow and it should um, uh, probably be able to also move out of Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, it has sort of started uh, a bit in uh, Helsinki now as well. And uh, it should probably be around uh, in the Nordics, um, or Sweden, uh, uh, Norway, Finland, Denmark, mm -hmm. um, before the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Say that's a bit defensive uh, coming from me, but, mm -hmm. but I think that's that's uh, probably where it's where it's heading. Uh, they have a great uh, operational team mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Daniel and Arno and, and all those guys. Um, so um, a lot of energy when they visit their office. Uh, so so I mm -hmm. think that they, they should be able to succeed because that's mm -hmm. actually where uh, where it happens. They have already sort of shifted their business uh, once. And they might have to adjust some some details over over time because that happens to, to every business. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, I think that those guys will uh, prevail. Actually. And have you do you have any general advice to entrepreneurs starting out? Yeah, you should read a lot of management books and do exactly <laughs> what 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 they say. No, but I, I mean the um, uh, the easiest thing is actually uh, uh, to pick up the phone uh, and uh, do something. Um, uh, my my uh, general advice is always to uh, stop sort of sending emails uh, and uh, tweets, etc. Uh, try to actually meet people, mm -hmm. uh, do the business, get things done, um, start to code, etc. Don't think too much, don't plan too much. Mm -hmm. um, keep keep uh, an action-oriented attitude and, and uh, 
uh, redo if you fail, yeah. and then redo again yeah. and redo. That's, and that's, iterate. Uh, and iterate exactly, uh, and try to um, try to make new interesting mistakes. That's a good takeaway. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye.